Your system must be so fragile if it could be toppled down by a few poisoned berries. And those were the lines, the memorable lines of Katniss Everdeen in one of the Mockingjay movie, one of the best one-liners in the Hunger Games series. And she said it straight to the face of the evil Cory, Cor, Cor, oh my gosh, I don't know if I could say his name right, Coriolanus, Coriolanus Snow. And um, so now I'd like to give you guys my movie reaction to the prequel to all the series of the Hunger Games and the name of, of this uh, current movie that is being shown right now is called The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. So this takes place many, 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 many years before all the, before the story of all the Hunger Games movie. This is a story of, uh, you know, before President Snow became president and when he was only um, 18 years old, by the way. So let me read to you a little bit of the synopsis. So years before he becomes the tyrannical president of Panem, 18-year-old Coriolano Snow remains the last hope for his fading lineage. With the 10th annual Hunger Games fast approaching, the young Snow becomes alarmed when he's assigned to mentor Lucy Gray ba Baird from District 12, uniting their instincts of showmanship and political savvy. They race against time to ultimately reveal who's a songbird and who's a snake. So this is the story and to me, it was such a heart-wrenching drama. It really broke my heart to see this young, ambition um, guy, 18-year-old man, who was filled with so much hope and, and so much kindness in, in his heart. And, and he was even, um, he even had a lot of empathy and sympathy towards the poor people that were struggling in all those districts and you know for all of you who have seen uh, the Hunger Games movie you guys know what I'm talking about the districts like they were all poor and they were all hungry and every time that there would be a Hunger Game they would pick tributes from from each district and and whoever one that meant that they won't go uh, starving for um, a year. So let me now uh, show you who, uh, the cast members, the amazing cast members of this movie. So Rachel Ziegler played Lucy Gray Bayard. She's like, um, I, I would not say the, the great uh, grandmother of Katniss Everdeen, although she, like she's related to that family. And Tom Blythe plays the 18 year old uh, President Snow or, you know, Coriolano Snow. And then Hunter Schaefer uh, plays the sister, Peter Dinklage. You guys know who Peter Dinklage is. I mean, he was from the Game of Thrones. And he was also in the um, the Game of Thrones and the X Men uh, movies. And uh, Viola Davis was such an amazing actress in this movie. She played the sinister doctor, it's so evil. Volumnia Gol and Ken Brochid. Oh, the names are getting harder and harder. And, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on. And I just want to tell you guys that I super highly recommend that you watch this at the IMAX theater to be so overwhelmed 
And um, to be honest with you guys, when I saw this movie, it felt like I was watching three different movies. If it if it weren't for the main uh, characters going from one scene to the other, it just felt like three different movies. So from the, the beginning of this movie to the, the middle part, it was... Well, the, the first part of the movie was, was a little bit um, slow-paced and then picks up in the middle and it becomes super, super fast-paced. Um, the violence in this movie had a lot of savagery in it that I believe that it was even more surprisingly just a little bit more violent than the other Hunger Games movie. I, I was... Uh, I was kind of surprised, you know, because I know that this is supposed to be, Hunger Games is supposed to be a, a violent movie, but they kind of withheld it from the original four movies that came out um, many years ago. And um, what can I say? It's, it's just amazing, and I love the way... Uh, it transitioned. It, it didn't feel uh, contrived. His The natural progression of Cor Corleana's Snow from being a kind-hearted man to becoming an evil person, of course, didn't happen overnight. It, it, happened, it happened really fast. It happened fast, but it, it made a lot of sense as to why he turned from good to to evil and there there was some kind of a heartbreaking uh art heartbreaking uh, melting point that that took place which i'm not going to spoil it for you because i really want you to go out there <laughs> and see this movie please watch it at the IMAX i beg of you <laughs> if you live here in vegas there $5 Mondays at, at the Palms Brendan Theater. Brendan at the Palms Theater. You guys should actually sponsor me because I keep on <laughs> mentioning the name of your th theater every single freaking week. <laughs> the, to me, it's like the only IMAX theater in town. So anyhow, um, going back to Viola Davis who seemed like uh, the evil mentor and the, the evil manipulator behind Snow's uh, degradation. Viola uh, Davis is such an Academy winning actress that she did an amazing and phenomenal, spectacular job. And I know that she had a lot of fun with this character and she ran with it. She, you could see that she relished every moment of being like so evil in this role. And um, so this movie, when it ended, I actually didn't, uh, story-wise, I didn't take it at its face value because I knew that the whole thing was, was manipulated by the uh, Dr. Volumnia goal. Um, if you take it at its face value, it seems like another person is to blame, but it really isn't. There is a larger monster behind the scene, or not behind the scene, but in, in this movie at the social media shows. <laughs> I'm gonna tag you, Carmen. So I, I, I really remembered Carmen. And I was saying to myself, this is a movie that Carmen might want to see. <laughs> because there there was a few parts that um, Rachel Zang Zegler sang and she, she did an amazing job in, in singing. She had a beautiful voice. And I believe that it was perfectly, um, interwoven in in this movie so there you have it ladies and gentlemen and that was the first segment of my movie reaction 
to the Hunger Games called The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. And I will be back with some more. In the meantime, we will be going on a commercial break. So don't go away. Traditional TV is going away. Hollywood is starting to fade. People are demanding real stories from real people. Our voices are now being heard in our own way. Podcasts, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok Live are becoming the norm. Internet TV has now reached the highest demand in human history. Social Media Shows is now the new media of the century. Now on digital and DVD. Did it. Space Wars Quest for the Deep Star is an epic sci-fi adventure. Do what needs to be done. An edge of your seat wild ride. We have company. Tons of popcorn munching fun. Five stars. A love letter to the sci-fi films of the 70s and 80s. No! With plenty of action and fun for all. You need to see it. You really do. The captain just decided it's time to go. I am ready for a sequel. Experience a bold new adventure. Space Wars Quest for the Deep Star. A good old fashioned adventure. Now on digital and DVD. Now on digital and DVD. Welcome back to the last segment of Spotlight. And I am JC Crisologo. I believe I forgot to introduce myself during the first segment. I'm JC Crisologo. And I would like to give a shout out to all the precious people that are watching. And I'd like to uh, give a shout out to Athena, my niece in, in the in the Philippines who was surprised that I love uh, K-pop music. Yes, my child, the Korean music is very famous here in the US. A lot of uh, young girls most especially go for the, the K-pop uh, boy bands and the, uh, the girl bands as well. <laughs> and hello to Popit and hello to Ellen and Eva Marie Maliari and the little doggy Sophia Meatballs. Hello to everyone that's watching, friends, loved ones, everyone that's watching. And I hope you guys are doing well. So, okay, now, um, if you have missed the first segment, I am doing my movie reaction to the recent... Hunger Games movie, which is a prequel, not a sequel, a prequel. And it's entitled The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I know it's it's a little bit of a long um, title. So it's a story of the, uh, the evil Corleonis Snow and how he became evil, you know, because obviously in all the... Um, the other movies, he's considered an a-hole and a douchebag. But uh, in this movie, he wasn't a douchebag yet. He was a good guy. He was a very kind-hearted guy that you will really fall for. Which was played beautifully by the young Tom Blythe. And I was surprised to know that Tom Blythe doesn't have white hair Apparently, they dyed his hair, they, they colored his hair white in this film, you know, to kind of look like the older version of him, which was marvelously played by Donald Sutherland in all the other Hunger Games movie, as, as you can see in the pictures. Young Coriolanus. Old Coriolanus or Senior Coriolanus. Yes. 
And so I just love how he uh, transitioned from good to evil, and as a matter of fact, not only good to evil, but he also became uh, treacherous. And um, you're going to be wondering why he became so powerful and how he got all that wealth to be in his status. Well, he had a friend in Sejanus Plinth is his best friend, and it was played by Josh Andres. And anyhow, he had uh, the best friend, uh, Sejanus, had a major, 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 major uh, role in how he, Coriolanus, becomes really wealthy at the end of the movie. I'm not going to show you or reveal to you how he got wealthy, but it's got something to do with the best friend, who was, by the way, some sort of a vigilante, and the best friend was, you know, very, um, he had so much empathy for the people living in, in the district and, and, and their plight, and um, so, yeah, I mean, this movie is so heartbreaking, that when the time came when you hear Donald Sutherland's uh, voice, you never see him in this movie, but you just hear his voice in the end. And this isn't a spoilers alert because you will hear him in, in the trailers too. And when, when he says, it's, it's the ones that we love that destroy us the most. And, and those lines really weigh heavy and like listen to those lines and read between those lines because that is what broke him. That is what was what broke Corleanus. And um, a little bit of spoilers alert, just not too much. I love the line when Corleanus finally says in the end, and it'll make a lot of sense if you watch it. Snow falls on top. And um, when he said that, I was like, oh, 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 no, he did not just say that. <laughs> he did not just say that. And um, anyhow, I hope you go out there to watch this film. As you can see, I, I even dressed for the part. I said I, I wanted to be a little bit of a Hunger Games right now and, and pay, um, uh, you know, a little uh, tribute to the fashion of the Hunger Games. And, oh, also, uh, before I, I forget, oh my gosh, I almost, I almost forgot. Um, so remember in the movie... There's uh, a guy named Lucky, and he was the um, the presenter, you know, and he he was always with that flamboyant lady who was like, you know, fabulously uh, dressed. So that guy in the original Hunger Games movie was played by Stanley Tucci. In this movie, he's played by a younger version. Uh, called Jason Schwartzman, and they did a phenomenal job of making him look like Stanley Tucci in uh, The Hunger Games. But um, there's no CGI, no nothing. It was just pure makeup, and that kudos to the production team for making him look exactly like Lucky. <laughs> Lucretius is his name. And yes, the only one that I, I'm missing is the the crazy lady, the crazy uh, fashionable um, lady. Now I now I have to see uh, um, her name. Just give me one moment. Let me see her name. I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight, you know, if I'm not gonna know her name. <laughs> So bear with me for a moment. And here we go. Oh, yes. 
The fashionable lady that I'm talking about is no other than Effie Trinket. To me, because I, I since obviously, you know, I love fashion, Effie Trinket was the one who carried the Hunger Games movie. <laughs> Most especially the first two ones. Because Effie was always fashionable and she would come out with her stylish and flamboyant outfit with the, the big hats, the butterfly dresses and everything. And also my favorite line from um, Effie Trinket in that movie is, Manners! <laughs> when she said it to Katniss Everdeen when Katniss lost her manners. So anyhow, and that is my movie reaction for The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. And I hope you go out to see it. And let me leave you now with my uh, new tagline. And my new tagline is that remember if you go out there and you are rejected and people say no, to you. Um, it shouldn't be a, a word of discouragement, but for you to better yourself, to hone your, your skills and perfect your, your craft and then go at it again and try again. Try and try until you succeed. And those are my last words for today. And see you next time. My name is JC Crisologo. I love you guys. Chowder.